What's up guys? Corporate just released their latest product. This is the W905. What makes this different? A lot of people wanted to connect this to their car's Bluetooth. In the previous generation you couldn't, in this one you can. But the biggest update is that this unit comes with a built-in camera that you can use for a dash cam or you can flip it around and use it as a sort of in-cabin camera just in case you want to have some sort of baby monitor. At least that's what they advertise it for. The packaging still looks exactly the same as the W901. First, we're introduced with the main product itself, the carpet ride display. We get a bunch of accessories just kind of just kind of all thrown inside the box. This is a CD player mount. This is the suction cup mount. And here we get a third mounting option. This is a flat mount. So if you were wanting to mount this on a perfectly flat surface, you get this and a sticky pad. Pretty much just double-sided tape, which matches this base. Now there's actually two options. You can get the W905 with or without a backup camera. Mine comes with a backup camera. It's pretty cool that they have two options because why would you wanna pay for something that you're not gonna use, so. For those of you who are willing, you can get a backup camera. Comes with a, I believe 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cord. And it's interesting to see that it's actually right angled. So I'm pretty sure this is to help give you a tucked look. Instead of having the wires coming straight out from the screen, now it's angled so you can hide the wires a little bit better. Pretty cool, these little details. We also get a USB-C charging port. I'm not very sure of the significance, but some people in the previous video were disappointed that it wasn't a USB-C port. Now we get this useful documentation right here on how to set up and use the CarpyRide 905. CarpyRide display, you can see you get the big giant camera in the back. And on the front, I do notice that there's a little, I guess some sort of sensor right here. It's a little, square pretty much the front is blank besides that little sensor and a mic on the right hand side we get nothing just a serial number and on the opposite side which is the left side let's see up top we get the auxiliary port the micro sd and yes it does come with the micro sd or they call it a tf card not sure what that stands for this is a 64 gigabyte right below we get the reverse camera port, and the charger port, type C. You'll notice there's a tiny little speck right here. This is a for a hard reset. Up top is the power button. Yeah, I don't see a sensor back here, so the front, that must be the light sensor where when it becomes nighttime, the screen will dim all by itself. Also back here, we get a built-in speaker, and here is the dash cam that you can move. Yeah, can you? Yep, you can move it up, down, left, right, pretty much in any circular motion. You can even raise it up by pulling forward or pulling up. And I believe you can spin it. Yep. Pretty cool. I don't know how many people have been asking for a dash cam, but hey, dash cam and Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Okay. All right, welcome to the interface walkthrough. I think it's really important to check out everything that the... Oh, <laughs> we're introduced with a nice little startup tone, which can be disabled unless you want to hear that every time you turn on this display. As you can see, Apple CarPlay automatically opens because I have it set up, but we'll look into that just in a bit. Right here is the home screen. This is what you can see when you first turn it on. Let's start up here with the date and time. You can manually set this or it'll auto update when you connect to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Below the time, you get the navigation bar, you get four icons, home. This is always gonna bring you to the home page, but it's only accessible on this home page. So in my opinion, it's pretty useless. <laughs> I guess it helps you switch pages without having to swipe. This sun icon is for adjusting brightness. You can manually adjust the brightness, or you could turn on the auto feature, which will 
adjust the brightness depending on how bright it is. Next, we get the sound icon. This icon is gonna change depending on what your audio output is. There's four outputs, the internal speaker, Bluetooth audio, FM radio, and auxiliary. We'll dive into these options really soon. And lastly, we get the power button. All this does is turn off your display and you can tap anywhere to turn it back on. You can do the same with touching the power button up here. And now you can already tell what the main purpose of this display is for. First, we get the DVR. This is the dash cam, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. So let's look at DVR first. If we tap on here, you're gonna see the front view camera. I actually have the reverse camera hooked up. Let me turn on the accessory mode. Now, when we tap on DVR, we get a split screen of the front camera and the rear view camera. Pretty nice. So on the bottom, you get this nav bar that hides itself. That first icon is the record button. The dash cam is always gonna be recording, but you can manually stop it by tapping on it and it'll turn gray. This lock icon will lock the current video. So the video won't be overwritten. Camera, you could take a picture, peace sign. There we go, we could check that out later. This is gonna take you back home right here, boom. This phone icon is gonna take you to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on which one you're currently connected to. And here you could toggle on and off audio recording with the dash cam. It's so also when you're in this view, if you wanna go full screen, all you gotta do is swipe left or right. You'll go from split view to front view, rear view, and then back to split screen. All right, so let me show you how simple it is to set up Apple CarPlay. Tap on the CarPlay icon, and it's gonna give you directions on how to set this up. Simply go to settings, Bluetooth, and wait for the Carpy Ride device to pop up. Hit pair, allow, and it's gonna prompt you for Apple CarPlay or not. There we go. It's pretty weird that it shows not connected, but here we are, we're connected. <laughs> so Apple CarPlay, it really resembles the look of the iPhone. Apple CarPlay is pretty much just an app that allows you to interact with your iPhone without actually using your phone. So Apple CarPlay is pretty much a interface providing you with navigation and music. So if you tap on that screen, you'll get a split screen of navigation and your music player. So instead of looking at your phone screen and having to squint or zoom in and out on your location, you could just go on here and get a much bigger view of the map on this display. And if you don't really care about the navigation, you can even tap on the music player and that'll take full screen as well. You'll see that it loads up apps that are downloaded on your phone. So I have Apple Maps, Waze, Google Maps, and for music players, I have Spotify, Amazon Music, Pandora, SoundCloud, and YouTube Music. You can also listen to text messages and also reply to text messages from here. But other than navigation and music, I don't really see myself using Apple CarPlay for anything else because there's no app store. You can't download any additional apps. Again, this is just for reducing distractions while driving. So if you wanna get out of here, just tap smart screen. Setting up Android Auto is just as easy as Apple CarPlay. If you didn't know, Android Auto is meant for Android phones. So once you open up Android Auto, it's gonna give you step-by-step -step directions on how to connect your Android phone. So we'll go to connections, Bluetooth, and we're gonna look for the Carpy Ride. Boom. And there we go. Now you're gonna notice it does look similar to Apple CarPlay. And that's because Android Auto is pretty much the same thing as Apple CarPlay, but it's designed for Android phones. So again, we're gonna get a split screen of the navigation and music player. If you tap right here, you're gonna see all of the apps that are loaded up from your phone that are supported through Android Auto. Again, there's not much of a difference between Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. One is just for iPhones and one is just for Android phones. So this is gonna load up your navigation apps, your music apps. You could 
listen to text messages and make phone calls. And there's a few things in here like game snacks. You could play games on this display if you'd like. But the most important thing is that you get a nice looking display for using your navigation or, you know, just to mess with your music player. And just like Apple CarPlay, there isn't a app store in here or the Google Play Store. So you can't download any additional apps like Netflix or Hulu or YouTube. You know, the fun stuff. However, there is a way to watch some videos if you'd like, and I'll show you. So within CarPlay and Android Auto, there's a couple of other Bluetooth options. Let me show you. First, we're gonna have to clear our connections. We'll head over to settings, clear connections, confirm. It'll take about five to 10 seconds. All right, once that is finished, you could tap on either CarPlay or Android Auto. Let's go into CarPlay, confirm. So here you'll see that we're in CarPlay. If I tap on Android Auto, it's just gonna ask me if I wanna switch to Android Auto, sure. But then you'll notice that there's four other options right here. AirPlay and Android Cast is how we're gonna watch videos on this display. So let's start with AirPlay. AirPlay is meant for iPhones only. Hit confirm. It's gonna show you how to connect to AirPlay on your iPhone. If you're familiar with iPhones, it's pretty much just screen mirroring to this display. Connect to this Wi-Fi connection. In my experience, it's always gonna show that it's loading. Just ignore that. From here, you just drag down and tap on the screen mirror icon. And there we go, smart screen. Once it's loaded, it should mimic the iPhone screen. And there we go. Whoops, boom, just like that. Pretty nice, there's a little bit of a delay, but this is a Wi-Fi connection. So it's gonna be a little sluggish. So once we're in here, you could go on YouTube and you would be able to click any video and it'll play. Just like that. And if you wanna go full screen, you would just tap on full screen right here. Let me give you guys a little bit of audio. It's um, so far with my testing, there isn't much of a delay between the audio and video. On the previous copyright units, there'd be a, a big delay between the video and audio. But the thing is, you would have to leave your phone on to keep watching videos. If I were to turn it off, the video stops playing. You would have to leave your phone on, which will drain your battery, and that's kind of a downside to this feature. Also, YouTube is the only app that works with watching videos. I've already tried Hulu and Netflix. On Hulu, it'll play the audio, but you can't watch video on either the iPhone or display, so that's no good. On Netflix, it'll play on your phone, and the audio will go through your speakers but you won't get any video on the display. But other than that, I don't think that there is any other use for screen mirroring because if you look, this display is actually smaller than my phone and I can't even interact with my phone using this display. So in order to get out of here, just swipe down, screen mirror and stop mirroring. Boom. Okay, we'll go to Android Auto. We'll switch to Android Cast, confirm. Now the thing about Android Cast is that you have to download a app called TC Link. Once you download the app, TC Link, you'll use TC Link to connect to this device. And you can see there's also a little bit of a delay. And I don't, and I'm not sure if you could tell, but the icons look more pixelated. It doesn't look as good compared to AirPlay. But fortunately, YouTube does work. So you can go in here, Tap on any video you'd like. You can see it plays. And if you wanna go full screen, you have to tap on that. It does seem like it's a little bit behind, but it's definitely lower quality than the Apple AirPlay. And again, you have to keep your phone on, otherwise it's gonna stop playing or just turn blank. If we try to watch something on Netflix, 
it plays on the phone, but you get no audio from the phone and no audio through the car speaker. But you do get the captions on the screen. <laughs> and Hulu won't even bother to play. It'll give you a notice straight up. Can't play on this display. And so to get out of here, you would have to go back to the, the TC Link app and click disconnect. Now remember, there were a couple of more options in the Bluetooth settings. We got Bluetooth music. Just in case you don't have an iPhone or Android device, when you Bluetooth to the carpet ride, you'll get this music player interface. I don't have anything that could Bluetooth to this other than an iPhone and Android device. So I can't show you what this looks like with music playing. And over here on Wi-Fi video, this is actually a pretty cool feature. This is going to tell you to download an app that's going to allow you to view videos on the dash cam. You can even download videos from the dash cam to your phone. So once the phone is connected to the display, you get a live view of the dash camera and you even get a timestamp of the current time of the current recording. You can stop recording. You can take a picture. You can go in here for the camera files. And it's going to show you all of the video files on the dash cam. You'll notice that I get a recording for both the front and rear camera. Pretty cool. I thought it was just going to record the front, but wow, it does both. If we go into snapshot, Remember that picture I took earlier? Haha. <laughs> and then we got locked. These are videos that we clicked locked on. Just in case you're wondering what happens when the dash cam runs out of memory, it'll overwrite the oldest video file. So that's why we have this locked setting right here. The dash camera is always going to record and create new video files. So once it reach its max storage capacity, what it does is it'll overwrite the oldest video and replace it with the newest video. So that's the purpose of having a locked video. Just in case you did get an accident or something, you'll want to tap on the lock icon and it'll make sure that that file isn't overwritten with a newer file. On the second page, we get playback. Here you'll be able to access all the video files just like on the app. All the files will be categorized. so. Here would be all the video recordings. We just tap on one and it'll play right here. We can go to photos. <laughs> it takes a picture on the front and rear camera. Pretty cool. And here are your locked videos. All right, audio output. So I currently have the audio set to auxiliary. So any music playing from the display is going to be output through the auxiliary port. If I switch to speaker, this is the internal speaker on the back of the display. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is how you pronounce it. Four ohms, three watts. It's not very loud. You're definitely not going to notice it with all the road noise while driving. Now, if your car is new enough and it has Bluetooth capability, in that case, you would use Bluetooth audio. So what you would do is you would connect your phone to your car. And then you would connect your phone to the display. What's cool about this is if your car doesn't have Apple CarPlay, this display is going to give you Apple CarPlay, which is going to give you that nice looking interface for your navigation and music player. And if you have steering wheel controls, you can easily change music at the steering wheel instead of having to go onto your phone to change music or reaching over to the display to change music. And you're also going to get the best audio experience using this Bluetooth audio feature because it's going to be clear, whereas the FM connection and auxiliary connection is going to give you that slightly static white hissing noise. But let's say your car doesn't have Bluetooth audio and it doesn't even have an auxiliary port. Well, you can use the FM transmitter. What you'll do is you'll set this to a unused station, unused radio station. So 103.5 is unused. I'll put this to 103.5. And there you go. Okay, so right now we're connected to the FM transmitter. And I don't know if you can really tell, but there's a white hissing noise from the radio. You can still hear that white noise. Right? 
Every day I'm mad lately. Never let it drive me crazy. Do this for my own And also the audio quality sounds a little muddy. Like it didn't sound clear, the bass didn't sound clean. All right, now let's switch to auxiliary. And yeah, this definitely sounds better. I almost can't tell that there's a, a white background noise. But it's only when it's quiet that you can really hear the uh, little static noise in the background. So the FM transmitter is going to be the last resort. It's going to give you the lowest audio quality. Auxiliary is going to be better, but to get the best audio experience, you'll want the Bluetooth audio. All right, and lastly, we have settings. There's actually a lot of settings in here. Once you go into settings, it's going to stop recording. So you'll get that prompt. Screen saver, you can set a time for the screen to just turn off. You got 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or a minute. Or you can just disable the feature by setting it to turn off. Driving position is going to affect how Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is going to look. So let's look at Apple CarPlay. We got the nav bar right here, navigation and music player. Now if I change it to right rudder, the nav bar is now on the right hand side. It used to be nav bar, navigation, music player. Now it's music player, navigation, nav bar. Next we get brightness. Here we get an additional setting. We get auto brightness limit. So you can set the minimum that the dimness will go to and you can set the maximum that the brightness will go to. All right, assistive touch, you can turn that on and off. You might have noticed it. It'll appear in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's this floating button right here. You can move it anywhere, or as I said earlier, you could disable it, but it's pretty much a quick access icon. You could tap on it, you can go home, you can go to your audio settings. You could adjust brightness, or you could go straight to the dash camera. Clear connection, this is gonna clear all of your Bluetooth connections. It's very useful, but it's super inconvenient how this display works. So right now I'm connected to Apple CarPlay, right? But let's say I wanna switch to AirPlay. I can't seem to disconnect from my iPhone from here. I've browsed through here and there's no way to there's no way to disconnect without clearing connections. But if I clear connections, that means I have to go through the Bluetooth settings and reconnecting as a new device. So it's kind of a hassle to switch between Apple CarPlay and Air and AirPlay. And the same goes for Android Auto and switching to the Android cast. Camera format, you can set your video format. 720p, 720n, I'm not sure what that is. 1080p and 1080n. And record resolution, you can set the clarity of the video. 2.5K is gonna be the highest quality video. It's gonna produce much larger video files, but so by selecting a higher quality resolution, when you pause the video, you're gonna have a clearer image versus a lower quality video. Split time is gonna set the maximum time for each video. So as your dash camera is continuously recording, you could set to split it every one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. I'll keep it at three. Microphone, this is just gonna toggle on and off the audio recording for the dash camera. Rear mirror image, this is if you have the reverse camera installed. So if I go into reverse gear right now, notice how I have this little cutout right here. If I were to mirror the image, it's just gonna flip the image. See, now the cutout is on the right side. I'm not sure why you would want a flipped image, but I suppose it's useful in rare scenarios. I suppose it's useful in certain situations. We'll keep that off. Reverse line calibration. This is also for the reverse camera. And I actually think this feature is pretty cool because you could you know, move around these lines yourself and you could get the perfect angle and distance if you wanna go all out and, you know, measure how far <laughs> you want this red line to go so you'll know when to stop. 
pretty cool. I like that. Okay, language. They have a total of 11 different languages. If you didn't notice, there's a tip sound every time I click on something. You can turn it off right here. See, no more tip sound. Voice control. These are a few commands that you can say. I'm not sure if it works in this screen. Let's see. Show front camera. Show front camera. Show front camera. Show front camera. What the heck, dude? Maybe it has to be an Apple CarPlay. Show front camera. Show front camera. Okay. I did get it to work before. Previously, it wasn't working because I had music playing, but right now I don't have music playing, so it should be working. Show front camera. Date and time. This is where you'll manually set your date and time. But like I said before, if you connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it'll auto update by itself. Storage info. This is going to show you how much storage. This is going to show how much is available and, and total capacity. So I have 36 gigs available out of 58 gigs. Format is going to erase your memory card. Factory reset is going to erase all factory reset is going to erase all settings and restart the display and firmware version. You'll be able to still, okay. And here you can see your firmware version. I guess this would be useful if you were to get in contact with copyright for a specific issue. I'm not sure how would you be able to update this. There doesn't seem to be any option to update. But there you go. That's everything for the CarpyRide Ride W905 interface. The CarpyRide Ride 905. What are my overall thoughts? So just to be clear, this product was provided by CarpyRide, Ride, but I do try to give my most honest opinion and I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. But after spending some time with the CarpyRide Ride 905, there's a few things that I'd like you to be mindful of when considering this product. One of the first things I realized immediately is when you use the suction cup mount, if you mount it onto the windshield, there's no way to use a sunshade. I like using a sunshade to protect my dashboard. So when I went to go park my car and try to use the sunshade, I realized I had to change the location of the suction cup mount. Another thing to consider is, even though this is portable, it does have this four prong bracket so it's hard to align these four holes with the prongs right here without looking behind there you know in some cars you probably can't peek behind there because the windshield might be too narrow another thing to consider is if you're using the auxiliary cord and reverse camera and power cord it's kind of tricky to plug them in while installed in the car in some cars, it's hard to look behind there, and it's just a little awkward to reinstall the display. So once this is installed, it kind of makes you not want to remove it because you'll have to go through the hassle of trying to get it in the right position and plugging all the ports and whatnot. I also placed double-sided tape underneath the display to kind of help hold it in place because when you use the bracket all by itself, the display will still kind of move when you use it. You wouldn't have to worry about that if your car has Bluetooth, but my car doesn't have Bluetooth, so I have to change the music by tapping on the screen or using my phone. But it's also a good idea to rest the bottom of the display onto something so it doesn't bounce around as you're driving. And even though the auxiliary cord and the reverse wire are angled, the power wire comes out straight. So you can still see the power cord sticking straight out from the display. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's. It, it could be an eyesore for some people. Obviously with those extra wires, you're gonna have to try to tuck them somewhere. I found some cable wire holders on Amazon. They just stick to your windshield and they help tuck your wires away if you wanna do that. In my case, I tucked it behind my radio, but at the bottom of it, you can see the wires exposed. But my setup was just for testing purposes. It wasn't a permanent setup, but those are just physical issues that I have with the display. As far as usability, I haven't had a problem at all with 
using CarPlay. I like that my phone automatically connects to the display without me having to do anything. One thing that really took me by surprise was the reverse camera because I've reviewed a bunch of different car stereos and I gotta say, this has the best reverse camera image I've ever seen. It looks so high quality. I really like the reverse camera on here and it's cool that you could do a live view because some people ask for that. And you know, sometimes you just get tired of looking at your maps or song information. Maybe you wanna see what the person behind you is doing on this display. <laughs> but there you go, that's the Carpetride W905. I honestly think this is a pretty good investment. Now that it has a built-in dash camera, and if you're not into dismantling your car to install an aftermarket radio, well, here you go. You got a plug-and-play portable CarPlay Android Auto display with dash camera. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're thinking about buying this product or you wanna find out more technical information, be sure to use my links down in the description below. It helps out the channel. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot for dropping by. See you guys in the next one. Yeah.